My name is Tyler Braun. I'm the Director of Financial Planning with the Trinell Financial Group, and I want to talk about the Silicon Valley Bank and also Signature Bank. So over the weekend, we learned that Silicon Valley uh, Bank was closed down by the federal government. And then yesterday, we also learned that Signature Bank was also shut down by the Federal Reserve. So as we look at those two entities, we have to start peeling back the understanding of why. So when most people hear that, there's an immediate shock that goes through uh, the marketplace that says, oh my goodness, a bank was shut down, but we have to look at what happened. So with Silicon Valley Bank, just like any bank, people need to remember banks are entities and they're for profit. So they're run like a business. So when people uh, put money into an institution or a bank, right, they're holding that on deposit. And most people have the thought process that says, well, if I put you know, $10,000 into a bank account, right? That that 10,000 is just sitting there. Well, what the bank is doing is they're taking that money and they're making profits or reinvesting that into other assets. So they could either lend it out to shareholders or to people that take out a mortgage or some kind of note, or they can invest that money into an instrument called a bond. So what Silicon Valley Bank did is they would take money coming in and they would turn around and buy longer term bonds in order to generate some uh, interest off of that money. So you put your money in on deposit, that money goes into the account, they take a portion of that money, they buy bonds with it. Traditionally, bonds are very safe investments. So with a bond instrument, you can buy them for different lengths of time. And as long as you hold that bond to its full maturity, right, you're receiving back whatever you paid to purchase that bond for. So for example, if you bought $10,000 into a bond and you had to hold it for one year, as long as you hold it for the one year, you get the $10,000 back plus interest from that bond. So traditionally they're very safe. What you run into is twofold right now. We have rising interest rates, number one. And number two, Silicon Valley is heavily tied to the tech industry. So what occurred is over the past year, with the volatility we've seen with technology uh, in that area, right? we've had uh, an immense amount of people that have been going in and needing to take money out at a faster pace than they've seen in the past. So think about it, Silicon Valley Bank is over a $200 billion bank. And if you have all these different lien holders coming in or all these different depositors coming in and trying to pull out their assets, that puts an enormous amount of strain on that bank. So what the bank is forced to do if so many people come in and ask for money to help cover payroll or pay off different expenses, they have to start selling those bonds that they purchased earlier before they reach maturity. And that's where the risk comes in. So if you're selling a bond before maturity, remember how I mentioned interest rates are rising. So I want you to think if, if you were to purchase a bond a year ago and it was paying you 2% interest to hold that bond. So as long as you hold it for the full one year, you get your principal back plus the 2% interest. Well, if now that same bond is being issued for a one year period at 5% interest, if you need to sell your 2% bond early to give that money to the depositor, or the individual who's requesting their money back, what happens is you have to sell that bond at a discount because someone's not gonna pay you the same amount you purchased the bond for when they can buy that same bond at a higher interest rate. So think about that. If, if the bank has to go in and start selling all these bonds at a loss, they continue to just lose money, lose money, lose money, and they no longer have that money left over to pay out to all the depositors. That's where a term called FDIC insurance comes in. So FDIC insurance just states that you get up to, as an individual person, up to $250,000 per account at a bank that's covered uh, through their insurance, meaning that if something like this happened, the federal government would step in and make you whole. Now, in addition to that, if you're a married couple, for certain accounts, it's $500,000 so there's different stipulations with the FDIC insurance. Silicon Valley Bank was used very heavily by businesses. And businesses many times go above the FDIC insurance threshold, which is a risk that's out there. 
So when we look at that piece, right, of the approximate 210 billion of assets that Silicon Valley uh, Bank oversaw, right, approximately 4.7 billion were under that $250,000 threshold, right? That's a huge number that were outside of the FDIC insurance. Now, where the shock and awe or the fear came from is that no one knew if the Federal Reserve would step in and bail out the bank. And when I say bail out the bank, what they're meaning is making sure that the individuals that had money on deposit were gonna be taken care of and being able to access those assets. So remember, it was 200 and over $10 billion of assets on deposit at Silicon Valley Bank. That doesn't mean that the assets are just gone if the federal government comes in and shuts down a bank. What they're doing is they're freezing assets, saying that you're below the threshold that they require in order to have on deposit, meaning that they're freezing that, looking for a new bank to either come in and purchase Silicon Valley Bank, and what they're doing is they're taking that lower amount of deposit, right? That debt that's on the books with the bonds and so forth. And they're merging it with other bonds and other securities through that bank to make it a good loan or a good debt to be in the threshold that the Federal Reserve deems necessary. Um, and in the meantime, over the weekend, we also learned that the federal government was going to step in or is going to step in and make those individuals whole, saying that if you had assets on deposits there starting today, Monday, they now have access to those assets where they can continue to pay their bills, et cetera. That's really exciting. That's a good thing. That's the federal government stepping in saying this was an anomaly. And you know, you had two things. You had rising interest rates and you had the tech sector. And it was a perfect storm that occurred there for that bank. And that bank was doing you know, all of the pieces and so forth uh, that they've done in the past, right? They were not doing anything that was malicious or um, out of the norm. It was literally a perfect storm of individuals needing deposits because of the industry sector. And then number two, the interest rates were rising and they had to access bonds earlier than they anticipated. So that's, that's what's happened with um, Silicon Valley Bank. Let's shift gears here and look at Signature Bank. So Signature Bank is a bank that we learned of yesterday that also was closed over the weekend. Signature Bank, very similar story. They had an inflow of people that were looking to pull distributions from the accounts, meaning get access to their cash, get access to their money. And what they found is they were one of the leading uh, banks or institutions back in 2018 that were investing a portion of their assets into cryptocurrency. Well, cryptocurrency the last five years has really taken a downfall and gone from an exponential price up here to somewhere substantially lower. So when they were forced to start selling those assets, that cryptocurrency type asset, right, at a discount, what they found is they were running short of that threshold where the Federal Reserve or federal government said they needed to be from a risk standpoint with, with cash on deposit and so forth. So the cryptocurrency bubble that had popped and come down is where they started to run a much more substantial risk when shareholders needed distributions. So the federal government also came in and said, this is something that they're going to stand behind and also make those individuals whole and have access to that money as well. So key takeaways that we look at, right? The Federal Reserve watches raising interest rates. They've been raising interest rates the last year, slightly more, um, and they continue to increase them to try and hedge or fight inflation. That's their key uh, ammunition in that battle. So as we look at raising interest rates, all of this is tied to the financial markets and all trickles down to everyone who's impacted. We just need to continue to watch interest rates going up uh, in the future. And the Federal Reserve is aware of this and they are watching this. What I want you to take away is these are two anomalies where one was tied heavily to the tech sector and their shareholders or depositors needed a large distribution and they had to sell bonds, which are typically very secure, and they had to sell them at a discount, and that's where they fell out of regulation with the federal government. Also with Signature Bank, very similar, but with crypto, instead of selling bonds, they had to sell cryptocurrency, and they had to sell it at a discount from when they purchased it, which put them out of regulation as well. The key takeaway to understand is the federal government stepped in. They're making those lien holders show, uh, or those depositors whole, 
and they're going to be there to back up the banking system. So nothing to uh, lose sleep over or anything like that. Just wanted to give you a quick overview. If you have more specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us as we're happy to explain it further. Hope you have a great day.